Okay, hey, good afternoon. This is afternoon, right? Yeah, Xiao Hao, Da Xiao Hao. Day and night, I sometimes I just mix it confusing. <laughs> okay, the Republic of Belao in search of cultural identity in music. And introduction of myself as an ethnomusicologist. First of all, on this memorable occasion in my life, I would like to introduce myself as an ethnomusicologist. Namely, how have I become an ethnomusicologist studying the music cultures of Micronesia and other Asian countries? I give you some time to read Chinese translation. Is it large enough? Yeah. yeah. Mm? I did my undergraduate studies at the University of Tokyo, majoring in aesthetics. In addition to general studies in aesthetics, I devoted my, uh, most of my time and energy in the field of music, such as one, reading musicological books in Japanese, English, and German, two, being deeply involved in choruses, both for mix and male voices. Okay, I still continue. You can read it. And three, learning the piano, guitar, shamisen, and koto. And four, listening to practically all kinds of music that were available to me in those days, whether live performances or recorded LPs. Day and day, my interest in the music culture of the world grew, and I finally determined to become an ethnomusicologist or a comparative musicologist. I was wondering where I could be trained on graduate levels. Certainly not in Japan in those days. I should go abroad to America or Europe. It was very fortunate for me to find a chance to apply successfully for a scholarship from the program provided by the Institute of Student Exchanges belonging to the East West Center that had been established a few years earlier by the United States government and annexed to the University of Hawaii, a state university. I was happy to find that I could major in music and perhaps write an MA thesis on one of the Pacific Islands, perhaps somewhere in Polynesia. My advisor, Professor Barbara B. Smith, who had made a survey type of field research in Micronesia in 1963, encouraged me to select Belau or Palau, partly because the Belau people are most progressive among the Micronesians, and therefore she was afraid that their traditions might be lost very soon. Another reason was that the elderly and the middle-aged Belau people were still able to speak the Japanese language. In this way, I was almost destined to undertake my fieldwork in Belau. What I did in Belau can best be understood by listening to a song entitled Mora Osamu Yamagochi 
Okay, that a lot of people play energy, a lot of energy, Yamaguchi, <laughs> about Osamu Yamaguchi. That was composed in traditional style, belonging to a genre called Boed, occasional song, dealing with current topics as if by newspapers. Okay, something like Pachi. In the song text, there are some words which you can recognize easily when you listen to the recording of their singing. As a matter of fact, the Belau people very often make use of so-called long words from the Japanese language since the former half of the 20th century, as well as the English language since the latter half of the 20th century. In this song example, the word uh, school is school, is school, and tip is tape, as borrowed from English. And the word shashin derives from the exactly same Japanese word shashin, meaning photographs. Okay, so example one, audio. Mora Osamu Yamaguchi, composed and sung by a women's group in 1966, before I left Belau, before I finished my fieldwork. Okay, translation, and this has been digitized, but I play an order recording from MD. Okay, it's text starts from here, Nira Osamu Yamaguchi, or something like this. for something he liked, he found them in the people's dreams and heritage. 
now it's changed to one person. The first person, I. I that means me, I. I turned the land and made tape recordings and took pictures, photographs. I'm, I am now departing Belau. Let it be known as my third, third favorite island. Japan, Hawaii, and Belau. <laughs> now Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> I am now departing with grateful heart and my prayers fulfilled. I am now departing for death is ungrateful and uncaring. My field work in Belau, the, okay, the end of the song. Now the second portion of my talk, my field work in Belau in 1965 to 66. As an embryo ethnomusicologist, I undertook field research in Belau living there for 10 months from 1965 to 66. At that time, this place used to be called the Palau District, the trust territory of the Pacific Islands, as commissioned by the United Nations to the hands of the USA. Okay, Chinese. In October 1994, it became an independent country with its official name, the Republic of Belau. But because of the long history of being referred to as Palau or Palau, it is now also often called the Republic of Palau. This confusing situation of their designations itself reflects a sad history of the Belau people who were first occupied by Spain in 1886, purchased by Germany in 1899, and started to be governed by Japan in 1914 after World War I. One year before the end of World War II in 1945, therefore precisely speaking in 1944, Japan lost these islands tragically. Okay, to Japanese people like me, end of the World War, World War II is 1945, but to the Talao people, 44, one year before, Japan lost these islands one year, one year before. Thus, the year 1994, as 50 years after the war, was the appropriate time for them, the Belau people, to become independent. Yeah, half a century, exactly half a century after the war. At, at the time of my fieldwork in the middle of the 1960s, the traditional aspect of Belau music and dance were still preserved, but only to a limited degree. Naturally, it was my task to document the tradition as much as possible before they become forgotten. Precisely for this reason, I visited practically almost all the villages in Belau for the very purpose of making recordings of the aged men and women who were still able to sing traditional songs more or less. The image of mine as a typical ethnomusicologist who was almost always carrying the tape recorder impressed the Belau people so much so that a group of women composed a song which you have just listened to. Okay. 
Okay, section three of my talk. My second visit to Belao in 1989. From the 1970s to the 1980s, most of us must have observed that there were increasing degrees of strong impacts of cassette recorders against traditional music throughout the world. Bela was not an exception, namely, new Bela songs, often referred to as Palau Pops, become more and more predominant in parallel with American and Japanese Pops rap rapidly introduced to this small island group, thereby affecting the traditional aspects facing the danger of extinction. Fortunately, however, as their consciousness of ethnic self-identity before independence grew towards the latter half of the 1980s, a kind of movement that may well be called Belao Renaissance started, including music of, of girls. I noticed, I noticed it in this when I visited Belao for the second time in my life in 1989. Staying there just for several days, I observed, for instance, culture learning programs were being implemented by the Belao National uh, Museum where some aged men and women were summoned to be instructors for traditional wood carvings and music and dance. Uh, school children would uh, stop by uh, here after school before going home. I now want you to listen to schoolgirls practicing a traditional dance song entitled Melaumu Fuel Song, a song that was composed in 1980 when Belao dispatched a group of dancers to participate in the third festival of Pacific Arts held in Port Moresby, the capital of Papua New Guinea, an independent country south of Belao. Watching these lessons and workshops, however, I felt that their repertoire was rather limited to only a few genres. At, at this time, I started thinking almost uh, oh, stuck, started thinking about my responsibilities to return my field recordings, field notes, photos, and so forth, everything to the better people, so that they might as well be given chances to make access to this data for the purpose of utilizing them in uh, broadening their repertoire. Here I would like to show you a map and a small portion of a recent uh, TV program entitled the Republic of Belau, so that you will understand the geographical 
and natural uh, conditions and the contemporary situations of the people. Down south from Japan, some 3,000 kilometers away. It's urban center. The urban center is Koro, with more than half of the whole population. Whole population is only 20,000 people, very small country. Okay, more than half living in Koro. Japan ruled these islands for 30 years. American influences dominated after the war. Now, uh, English and Bela languages are the official languages. This, uh, in the video, you can see the flag. This is the flag, national flag. The buildings of the government offices are either reuse of the ones built by Japan or newly constructed. According to the traditional custom, each village should have a community house called Bai or Abai, in which the villagers gather on various occasions such as village council, teaching traditional customs and knowledge to younger generations. The wood carvings on the walls functioned as a means to transmit the traditional knowledge, including music and dance. TV program now. Watakushiwa Nina Antonio Toshiwa Nanaju Boshai Kako de Nihon Mobutao Takushan Naraimashita Kanyo wa yo itoko Toko na tsushima yo
50年間アメリカの統治のもとに置かれたためアメリカ式の生活様式が浸透しており今も英語は公用語になっています。独立したのは1994年世界でも最も若い国の一つですパラオ人による国づくりはまだ始まったばかりです森の中にパラオの伝統的な建築が残っていましたバイと呼ばれる村の集会所で若者たちに伝統文化を教える場でもありました壁や梁に描かれた絵文字を持たなかったパラオの人々は絵で伝説や歴史を伝えたのですパラオに伝わる代表的な伝説です昔恋に落ちた若い男女が新月の晩浜辺で合いびきをしましたつくと女性の腰身のがなくなり砂の上を何かが張った跡が残っていました次に2人が満月の晩に同じ浜で会うと腰身のを引きずったウミガメが砂浜に上がってきましたこうしてパラオの人々は貴重な獲物であるウミガメが満月や新月の夜産卵のために上陸することを知ったというのです伝統的な場合はかつて村ごとにありましたが今は3カ所に残っているだけで Okay, now section four. After independence of the country in 1994, in September 1994, one month before the independence of the Republic of Belau, in September, I was invited to an international conference held in Belau under the theme The War in Belau 50 Years of Change. As a specialist in music of Belau, it was natural for me to make promise、uh, during the conference that I will return my Belau collection in the, in the future. What I had in mind was not only simply returning the tapes and notebooks, I would rather plan something else too. For example, there could be some kind of、uh, activities of mine in which I might encourage the Belau people to listen to my recordings and learn the songs belonging to some of the genres、uh, which the modern Belau people are not really able to sing. But I have had to postpone to doing anything. Uh, nearly for 10 years because I, was, I had been too busy as a full time professor of Osaka University.
In 2003, I had a chance to undertake a small field work in December uh, 2003. I asked a group of aged women to gather together and listen to the recording of the song, a song about Osamu Yamaguchi, as you know already, my recording. So I show you a video how the below uh, women listening to my old recording and trying to learn to sing because they are to some extent familiar with familiar uh, with the style because they have sung a long time before but they almost forgotten but now try to remember. The ladies were old enough to remember this specific style of group singing, although they have recently seldom sung. Uh, this young named Boyd. They showed much interest in the content of the song text about Yam Osamu, the photocopies of which were given to them just because of the limited time. Uh, even without a written text in hand, it would have been very easy for them to learn the song by repeated listening. They gradually started singing and following the old cast recording. You can see this video. Soon afterwards, they finally became able to sing quite appropriately. After their success in singing the song, the ladies told me that they were happy to sing in the traditional Boyd style, which made me happy too, of course.
Very good, yeah, but it's still become good, very good. This way, they have become very good, you know, able to sing very well. Okay, the section five of my talk today. The Ninth Festival of Pacific Arts, hosted by Belao. The year 2004, ten years after the independence, was highly uh, significant to reinforcing the cultural identity of the Belau people through music and dance. This is because the Republic of Belau functioned as the hosting country uh, for the Ninth Festival of Pacific Arts. This cultural event taking place every four years, just like Olympic Games, every four years, just in between Olympic Games, two years in between. Somewhere in the vast area of Pacific Islands, it's now regarded as an important occasion for the Pacific Islanders to show their identities of each country or territory, as well as to share the cultural solidarity altogether among the islanders. I will show you the promotion DVD that was produced by the government of Belau prior to the event promotion, which have certainly called attention and expectation to this event among the Pacific Islanders. Or top the Ramart, the coming ninth festival of Pacific Arts.
21st century, thoughts and ideals are of globalization, language, culture, and diversity. The things which make our world interesting and exciting are being lost at a rate faster than historians can document their existence. There is an urgent need to ensure that culture and artistic heritage surf the same waves as modern technology. While technology, media, and travel have accelerated the loss of culture, the people of the Pacific have found a way to use these same influences to preserve their heritage. Every four years since 1972, over 20 nations from the Pacific region have gathered at a different venue to preserve history and promote awareness in a 10-day celebration of culture, the Festival of Pacific Arts. The festival serves as a way to bind the various islands' cultures into shared single force giving them hope of perseverance and the realization that they are not alone. Building on over a quarter century of festival history, the cultural traditions of the indigenous people of the Pacific Islands are passed on, interpreted, preserved, and represented by this important international event. <laughs> held in the Republic of Palau in July of 2004, the first time in the North Pacific. Over 2,000 participants and more than 5,000 visitors are expected to attend. For those unable to make the journey, media crews from around the world will be attending, and the festival will produce a video of the event to be distributed to all participating countries for local broadcast. and healing arts, culinary arts, canoe and navigation, literary arts, applied arts, and symposium. and donations from individuals and corporations around the world are the driving force behind the success of this growing event. Central Festival Village, cater for meals, house delegations, <coughs> stage events, and run operations, program, and communication facilities. Sponsors and contributors are honored at the festival through various means of recognition, including diverse publications such as the festival newsletter, program booklet, posters and flyers, as well as through website, banners, and television and radio advertisements. Sponsors and contributors are also thanked by means of announcement on stage during performance events.
future generation relies on us to pave the way for the continuity of the uniqueness of each island's culture and the protection of natural resources. This will ensure that the environment will continue to support the livelihood of a group of people's cultural and artistic heritage. Support the upcoming festival with the knowledge that you will be directly preserving the culture and heritage of millennia old people as they step into the future. This year, uh, uh, the 11th Festival of Pacific Arts will be held in the Solomon Islands. So any, anybody you can welcome to go there. Section 6. An example of digitized audio recording. The next step that was in my mind was to give back my recordings and field notes to the uh, Belau People Society most efficiently in the digitized format. But I didn't know how to digitize these things. So it was therefore highly timely that in 2008, Professor Chen Shanghua, then the director of the Graduate Institute of Ethnomusicology, National Taiwan, Normal uh, University, Shifantashi. Uh, he uh, is now dean of the whole the school of music. He then approached me in 2008 and materialized the archives of Australian music because he thought musical Palau must have something to do with the music of Taiwan aborigines. So I didn't have to digitize myself. I, with the hands of the people in Taiwan, the, everything is uh, almost has been digitized. Now I would like to show you what we have accomplished so far. Before doing so, I want you to become acquainted with the most representative genre of traditional music of Belao, namely Esos, which can be translated into Chinese as Chuhuihua, Chuhuiko, Shukaika. The best way for you to become acquainted with this genre is, to, is for me to sing one song for you and at the same time I ask you to participate in my live singing. In the video example of TV program, the traditional community house called Bai or Bai was shown as you remember. where the village leaders with the titles of being Rubak uh, gather in this by uh, for the purpose of holding a council, discussing various political matters, village matters. All the attendants must join in the opening, cer opening ceremony in which one Rubak after another must sing songs classified as a souls. So Aba is about this size of the hall, yeah? so you are all look back. We are now gathering in a political meeting. Now I am a Rubak, one of the leaders, old enough to be called so. 
Therefore, I will sing a peaceable a s o l s All of you who are also important r u b a k and therefore gather here, I expect it to follow the traditional custom to shout and sing together at the, each end of the verses of the song. I sing, and after that, please experience with me shouting, Mmm, way! Okay? Okay, first thing. The Angara Blue Day, El Mukta Krato Tore Yang, Mmm, way! The Angara Blue. Very good performance, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, now I'll, I'll show you, uh, I'll play a digitized example of audio recording together with the song text and its translation on the screen. How this has been digitized, uh, record, audio recording, and how the notes, lyrics, written down and coordinated to this. I can show you. The particular recording was not made in the, by the community house, but for the sake of documentation, I asked the musician to come to my apartment, a very quiet place. In 2007, okay, 
the Kyoin Concert Halls right in the center of Tokyo planned a special concert concerning the music dance of Belao. Thus, Esol's Council Songs of Belao, as well as Void, the two genres of music in Belao that you have already become acquainted with, will be also shown to you from this Tokyo performance. Here, uh, some comments with regard to the traditional polyphonic singing style of this genre, Boyd. As you may have already noticed, the song text or the lyrics of each verse is recited by one person whose role is to <coughs> recite the text in advance for the purpose of making it sure that what is going to be a song text This role is therefore a kind of prompter, that just like the prompter in the operas of Western music. Before she finishes her recitation, the leader of the chorus starts singing, followed by all the members singing in unison. But there is only one person who, uh, one person, just a minute, you get confused. There is only one person who does not join uh, in the unison singing, but instead she sings a counterpart with different pitches and with different voice production. All these musical roles are termed in Belar language and are precisely prescribed as the essential aspects of this particular singing style. Okay, it's the video example. This song is then. Boyd.
体どういう意味を伺いでしょうか。ボイ。Section 7, another example of digitization in our project, combining the、uh, audio recordings and silent 80 millimeter、uh, films. The very first work during my stay here in Taipei,、uh, that Professor Chen, Professor Huang,、uh, And I, and I agreed to accomplish was to combine one of my silent 8 mm films with a sound recording that had、uh, been made simultaneously, therefore, to synchronize them. Silent film and audio recording combined together. It's, it was a very difficult task to synchronize them. The project assistant, z h a o Wen x i a n who is here to help me, an able assistant to this project, and myself spent one whole afternoon of November 18th, 2009, thanks to the help of a, a body of other assistants, including z h a o Wen and Wei Yi.
Oh, my friends. We were finally able to reach a tentative version of the synchronized version of a dance piece which lasts one minute and 40 seconds. This result as a model case of our work in the project is now to be shown for you, to you as a conclusion of my talk today. Which one is? Women's tip dance? Yeah. Next. Next. Well. So I I put next. Next. Yes. I still have time, so I play which the section I skipped. Yeah. And in 2000, you remember 2004, the ninth festival of Pacific Arts, I went there and visited Palau and I took some of the dances that was uh, well uh, performed by young men, uh, women, young men and women which was impossible in my days in the 1960s. But now the new, uh, the new way of uh, uh, showing the traditional dance in better way, much better than before.
This is 
in this way, the traditional dance uh, for men, rook, and then for women, and like, both are reconstructed perfectly, which was impossible in my, when, uh, in the 1960s when I did fieldwork. So their cultural identity has been already established by way of uh, reconstructing the traditional music and dance. And so this is my conclusion. Thank you.